One of the big questions uh, about autism is what goes wrong? We know from brain imaging studies of children with autism spectrum disorders that their brains don't process sensory stimuli in the same ways that neurotypical children do. The world becomes a very confusing and overwhelming place. When you give a child who's on the spectrum a task where they have to see lots of pieces as part of one big whole, Kids with autism have a more difficult time doing that in general. We also know that children with autism spectrum disorders have difficulty learning language through spoken language and that reading is a better mode for them to learn language. Typically developing kids learn to speak first and then to read and their ability to speak helps them learn to read. The converse is true for kids with ASD. Of course the challenge is how to get the child to be receptive to learning anything from an adult without repetitive movements, without stereotypies, and to do this the child has to learn very fundamental impulse control. We've learned a lot from brain imaging studies in particular about what circuits in the brain control impulses. There are connections between the frontal cortex or the part of the brain that underlies the forehead with small structures almost in the center of the brain called the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia, which is an older part of the brain that's involved heavily in the initiation and the planning of movements, is also responsible for our fine control over making movements, to do something once or to do something twice and then to stop doing it, to feel like doing something but to inhibit oneself from doing it. A lot of this stuff at its core happens in the basal ganglia. Those connections are very, very important in allowing anyone to control impulses and in fact the better one gets at controlling impulses the stronger those connections are. And children who have autism spectrum disorders are able to learn impulse control and self-restraint but they need to be taught how and the skill needs to be practiced. Dr. Blank is a, a brilliant developmental psychologist. What she's trying to do is to find another way into the child's mind, sort of a back door, that doesn't rely on spoken verbal communication. And what she's hit upon is reading. Reading is really a multifaceted task that results in the acquisition of information and its storage. So it involves a variety of different functions. Just because someone's spoken language circuits may not be functional doesn't necessarily mean that the nearby reading circuits are also dysfunctional. The areas in which the optic perception of words on a page are perceived is really through the optic nerves, through the optic chiasm, and then are transmitted to the uh, receptive areas in the brain. And then that information is then transferred to the frontal cortex and then it's stored here. This structure is called the hippocampus, which is a critical structure in terms of the actual process of memorization. And so it's a motor skill, like riding a bike, driving a car. As you do it more and more, this skill becomes very hardwired. Through experience, through learning, through therapies, uh, our brain actually is constantly growing and evolving and changing. If you could help a child with some aspect of their learning, a relatively small change could have enormous implications and benefits for how a child develops.